This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Dan Elias, here with late-breaking clinical science on ablation. And for that, I'm joined today by Dr. Lucas Bersma, author of the Faradice. First off, I really love that name, Faradice Registry Data. Approximately 1,100 patients were presenting the acute data. And first off, summarize what you found. Well, thanks for the introduction. Uh, what we found in this uh, all-comer registry, prospective all-comer registry, is what we found is basically that um, the patients that we enroll are very homogeneous across geographies. They're both paroxysmal and persistent patients. We see pulmonary vein isolation happening and also patients that receive targets beyond pulmonary vein isolation like posterior wall or mitral isthmus or quiver tricuspid isthmus ablation. And what you see is uh, overall that as we know already from, from prior studies, this confirms that this is a very safe technology. We see very little post-field ablation related side effects. We do see some groin uh, problems, obviously, uh, because we need to get into the, the bloodstream and get into the heart to do these ablations. But other than that, it's a safe and it's a very efficient procedure. What we also found uh, is that uh, operators that had experience they tended to be very quick in these procedures. You see that, that, that early adopters, they take about 15 to 20 minutes more. And you see with experience that these operators do a, do a shorter procedures. They're very, very efficient and very safe. And so these acute data look, look very well and they confirm what we've seen from mostly the randomized data and some of the, the registry data that have been, been published so far. So I want to dive into some of the unique things about your, uh, about your data. First off, we have Manifest, we have Euporia, and now we have Theradice. Yeah. All clinical registries. Tell us the unique thing about your registry. Well, I think Manifest and, and Euporia, which uh, in, in part is uh, some of the patients that were also in Manifest. Manifest is a fantastic database because it gives us a first glance at a very large number of patients, 17,000 patients that were followed. Uh, that being said, it's a retrospective follow-up uh, and centers were asked to, to, to give their data. And so we don't know how well all of these data were prospectively gathered. So there's always that. Um, the other difference is that this registry is going to go on for three years. So we're not only reporting on procedural data, but we will also report on one and three year follow-up data. And that's very different from the retrospective service data that we see uh, from Manifest and Euphoria. Great. Well, thank you. The other thing I think is pretty unique is also your long-term, uh, your rhythm monitoring is pretty unique. Can you elaborate on that as well? Well, obviously, what you see in in these uh, in the registers that have been uh, that have been published so far is that the rhythm follow-up was not very homogeneous and and ranged from ECGs to sometimes uh, a halter of 24 hours and sometimes very diligent halter monitoring with several multi-day or weekly uh, monitoring. What we will see uh, in this prospective registry is more diligent rhythm follow-up. We will uh, really make sure that we see all the ECGs and that we make halters and that we do a little bit better, uh, I think, in with regards to, to rhythm follow-up to make sure that we are actually capturing what's going on, uh, not only acutely, but also during that three-year follow-up. And I think that's very relevant. And because you have that long-term follow-up, we're going to catch people that get uh, arrhythmia recurrences even later on because the more you the more you monitor and the more you follow you will find uh, you will find arrhythmias popping up uh, even later absolutely so you know with PFA I think the true promise of PFA right is understanding and improving safety right um, can you uh, as a final point kind of dive into the what were your safety findings in your acute data and so we looked into two different aspects of safety one is PFA related safety issues so the energy we're using the other is just doing the procedure and what you see is obviously that doing a procedure for uh, atrial fibrillation ablation will take its toll with regard to groin access issue having said that uh, most of them were minor and not major but that's the that's the biggest group of adverse events that were reported PFA related adverse events were actually very very rare both uh, hemolysis, uh, pulmonary vein stenosis, uh, esophageal injury, none of these things came to light. It, and, it, and you see that, that let's say, energy-specific adverse events are very, very rare also in this registry again. Well, thank you. That truly is the promise of PFA. And uh, thank you, Lucas, for joining me. You're welcome. And thank you all for tuning in to Heart Rhythm TV.